everyone. Welcome to Stamping Play. My name is Rochelle Ledsmith and thanks for joining me for my Wednesday Creative Escape held every uh, week where I share with you some creative inspiration. So I'm based in Melbourne and um, wherever you are joining from. So thanks for, I appreciate it and thank you for joining me. Give me a few moments to um, make sure everything's going okay. And um, I've got a fancy fold card to share with you today. And um, it's going, we're going to be using the Hues of Happiness suite. Um, it's a beautiful suite and I'm sure it caught your attention um, when you first received your catalogue. It seems to be quite popular and it's got beautiful colours and um, the elements in that suite are really pretty. And I thought I'll share with you this um, fun fold. It's the first time I'm creating. Um, I've been creating it, so I... Um, and it's an easy one so I think it'll work really well for you. Just before I um, go ahead with sharing my card I want to uh, let you know about some specials. I hope you caught the what we had yesterday. Stamping up throw in some specials here and there and yesterday we had our free shipping day and I did offer with that free shipping day I offered some mystery packs so um, if you were lucky enough to get them, you, um, I'll be shipping them out next week. And um, they have new products, uh, some uh, retired new products, or, um, and um, some used, but it's a um, bunch of goodies in there according to the or value of the order you placed. So um, that happened yesterday, and um, keep your eye out for things like that. I do send it out in my newsletter as well so um, just to remind you and I put it on Facebook and send out blog posts so just uh, keep abreast of that. Currently our uh, promotion at the moment which you can really get into is the kids collection um, where you buy one get one 50% off. Um, now when you, if you're going to do it online and you're placing your orders online whatever you add first and then the whatever you add second is going to be 50% off. So if there's a $21 kit and a $41, $44 kit, I would add the $44 kit second. So you're going to get that half price. So um, if you've got um, the whatever goes second. So it doesn't matter if it's higher price. It's just going to reduce that. So that's a really good value. It's not giving you the lower priced item, half price. It will give you the higher priced item. I tested it. It works. So it is a great time to get some Christmas gifts. You can get um, the orchids range from $21 to I think they're some are over $50. There are gift bags. There's treat bags if you want for kids parties. Um, little gift boxes you can give for Christmas gifts maybe for colleagues. Um, um, in my head, I'm thinking of that You Are My Anchor Kit, which you can make those little note cards and package them in the boxes that come. Um, there's four note cards, you put them in the box and that's a gift ready to give. Um, so Christmas is only six months away, yep. So get, get in, um, $21, pretty reasonable for a gift. And then if you're getting one half price, um, that is good value. So if you want to place your order online, you can do so or you can contact me and um, I can do that for you. So today um, I'm going to be using the Hues of Happiness Mystery Card. It's a diamond flip fold card and um, what I'm first going to show you is the Hues of Happiness suite in our catalogue. It's in the annual catalogue on page 108 or pages 108 to 109 and um, you get, um, I think, um, what really stands out is this beautiful paper. Uh, I have cut into a quite a bit of it, but I want to show it to you. Um, so what I generally tend to do is cut half the pack, and um, so it's ready to go. So I'm not stingy, and um, then don't feel like cutting it. And then I save half uh, uncut if I can help it. So if I need to make 3D projects and, and the like. So that's just a tip for you um, that works for me. 
and um, it is uh, helpful. So this is the paper that comes with the strip. Um, this actually die cut with the, the some of the dies that are included in this pack. And I'll flip it over. Oh, I might as well do it while I'm here. Um, so you've got a range of colors there you can use. Um, that's that one. Same thing. I'll just um, cut some shapes out of that. Uh, it's like a real flurry of color. So you're not stuck with one color. You can mix and match and then a much more simple um, on there. Like we've seen that one. Uh, this is another one. I don't know whether I showed you that one, but I particularly like this one because of the. Uh, I like the navy in the background. It just looks really nice. Um, and that's that one. And I have another one which I'll show you because I have actually cut into it um, well and truly. I cut two sheets. So it's this one. Um, and that's the back, but it comes. Um, uh, it's like a combo. It goes into different colors. So um, you get a few. So 12 sheets of 12 by 12 paper there. And you get this stamp set. Um, so wherever in the catalog you see like a shaded, um, you can see it's shaded. That means it'll cut like a bit of an ivory color, I guess, or a beigey color. That it actually cuts out with dyes. So that's an indication. Our stamps are shown at 100% size. So you can um, um, gauge what size it is, unless they are unspecified, but it's very few that are not at 100% size. So wherever you see that beige means there's a die to cut that. So for instance, let me show you this die. You can see that fits on that. Lots of nice sentiments and nice um, um, font as well. So we'll get to the cut. I'm going to go backwards, to, so to speak. So let's start at the very beginning. So let's start at the very end. Um, I'm going with um, stamping my images first. So I need a few of these flowers. So I thought oh, I'll, I'm, I'm, I've got my piercing mat under because I am, they're photopolymer stamps and they give a much better image when you use your piercing mat under. I'm going to be using these four images. Let me get them in. So on the stamp set, I've stuck with the smaller ones. It's that, that, and the two sets of leaves. I've got Tuxedo Black. And I will stamp two of these flowers. I might do an extra one just um, because I'm thinking ahead. Um, and give yourself space to die cut it and just one for good measure and a couple of these okay. I'm not going to clean the stamps for now and we I don't know why I closed that Let's do some leaves. And a couple of these. Hope you have been well. And just say hi to me if you are watching with me, watching on replay. I put this uh, up on YouTube later. So, um, and also subscribe to my newsletter. I'm going to be putting up the PDF and that will be exclusive to my newsletter subscribers to receive that PDF um, tutorial um, and that will include all the measurements and everything like that. So my color scheme, I will show you what paper I'm uh, thinking of using. Um, I've got a blushing bright card base and some of this paper. So I'm going with um, 
that so it's that's the other piece i was sh talking about which i have really cut into and um the back of that so i will save that and we're going to use um because of my colors i'm going to use um some stamping blends to color this in now we don't have a blushing bride stamping blend so i am going with um some flirty flamingo and melon mambo now that's one of the colors you will see that are in this suite this is daffodil delight i'm going to be mixing those colors like the roses you get with the double uh, petal colors um and i'm hoping this um let me know if the transmission is good and you can hear me okay um last time i know it was a bit tricky but it's looking okay on my end so i'm going to start um with the daffodil delight um and i'm not going to color all these um um i'm just going to do two, two three so i want one for my inside of my card so i'm using the light daffodil delight and i wanted to do this on camera so you see the process and um i could have pre-done this but sometimes it's nice to watch how it's done and um, maybe i always like watching coloring and you learn tips and tricks along the way so maybe it may help um, and i'm going over lines and things because um it's not going to run because i've used tuxedo black under as my outline Then I will do another one maybe for the inside. I'm just doing a spare just to see how it looks. Now uh, this card I am making, I have another one here, but I'm making this in mind for a couple um, who have just got married. And um, so that is my choice and colors are with them in mind. Um, and uh, I think this will make a nice wedding card. And with a fancy fold, it's always nice and um, a bit of wow, isn't it? So I've just given a bit of a rough color. Now I am going to bring in um, the light floaty flamingo. So I tend to do this with my um, uh, blending, bring in, mixing all kinds of colors. And I think with these particular flowers, it'll um, really catch that color well. And add some of that variation. see in some of those roses i am not a gardener and i really have no idea but i do like looking at pretty gardens i reckon i'd kill them just looking at my plants Okay, so I've just gone around those edges quite um, adding a bit of shading. Yeah, we'll bring in a bit of dark. I may not use um, the magenta matters, but I will, uh, sorry, not magenta matters, that's retired. Um, that um, melon man boy. bring a bit of darker color in there it's always the center is darker and 
and they don't all have to be the same. And now I'll bring in my Daffodil Delight, the light, and I'm going to blend that in. And I just like that look it gives. I'll try one with a bit of melanin blend, we'll see. Let's just try it on a side. Might be a bit too dark, I think. So we'll just set that aside. No melon mambo. We'll just put a bit more uh, light flirty flamingo. So for me, when I do blushing bright, I do use flirty flamingo a fair bit because it um, does work well for that. Hi, Valda. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining me today. Feel like it's been ages but I'm, I think I did a live last week I know I had a bit of a hiatus of my lives and um, I'm back I'm excited to bring you different things and um, we've got a new Christmas catalog or a mini catalog I should say the proper term but for me I'm just looking at all the Christmas stuff um so that um goes on sale in july and if you would like a copy let me know and i'll get one out to you if you already have someone who gives that to you they'll i'm sure they will send it to you but if you haven't got a, someone who's sending that to you please contact me and i'll get it to you all right so it's just with stamping blends you will find it's a matter of just working 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 with them you don't have to work as much as i am but or blend them as much as i am but i like doing that now for the fi final blend i just like to bring in um, my color lifter this always helps with uh, really blending your colors And, um, and if any, there's several purposes for a color lifter. It will add highlights, but it helps you blend. And we can always add more color as when we see what the designer series paper is looking like and how it blends in, right? And that color lifter is like um, it's so helpful because it just takes away any color as well if you make a bit of a boo-boo and you've got to take it off so it blends it um it takes a little while to work so we're just going to leave that aside for now and i'll just do my leaves i should have a little bit clean my blend so i could okay. So I've got soft sea foam and granny apple green for my blends. I tend to go like a lighter and kind of a darker, um, like a brighter color and it works. Um, so we'll do can see I'm doing just doing a few rough lines and a bit of white space is okay you can ask me any questions you may have I'm happy to help you um, If you have someone who you'd like to see this video, please share it with them. That really is helpful to me as well. And it gets, at, gets other people enjoying some crafting and maybe it will inspire them to um, create. And there's a reason I'm doing this backwards where I'm starting with the flowers and things. So I have everything set up and ready to go. And uh, then once we do our fancy fold, it's all Done. I just this is light granny apple green I'm using. Okay, um, this 
stuff softly for him. And I'll just go with the light. So I'm just mixing and matching these colors just so that it um, uh, has two different looks on the two leaves, two types. All right. Oh, and I forgot this one, didn't I? <laughs> Let's go back and do this. This card has a little bit of detail. Now, how much you put on this uh, card is um, up to you, but I just felt um, it is a fancy fold, and um, you would think it's you're giving it for um, like a twenty first or something more special, something a bit uh, more detail, uh, more event, a bigger event, I should say. All right, so I'm going to start die cutting these, and I'll use some washi tape to hold it in place. We also have masking tape which I'll be used showing you how to use masking paper I should say. And um so this will fit in your mini. I've got my big machine because I have got some other embossing and things to do as well so I'll just bring in um, the stamping card and emboss machine. So whatever you've got, you can use. It'll these are dies will work with any of that machine. I use my older plates on the base and I swap and uh, chop and change the top one so then I just when the one gets old I just move the top to the bottom and get a new plate at the top so whenever I get a new set I don't use them both at the same time I save them so I'm not running them both ragged run that through I'm just gonna bring it back you don't need to but just so because it's just closer to me it'll with one pass is enough That looks um, really nice. It's come out well. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to put my bib and bob there. So experiment with your stamping blends. Um, mix the colors. See what happens. You'll be pleasantly surprised. So let's do these others. This guy doesn't want to come out. Okay. So we've got that one. That one. So when you use washi on your masking paper, this um, it's, it's quicker, so you can do a few at a time.
sometimes we don't have long videos, but today's a little bit long. That that hasn't gone through, so I'm going to put that through again. That's only because it was the uh, uh, it must have been at the end, and I've missed that. So that's all right. And sometimes if it doesn't go through, I will just cut it. All good. While we're at it, we might as well do this one. So these particular dies will cut the DSP as well. So if you don't want to color, you can use the DSP directly. So I've just chopped and changed the colors a bit. We've got all our leaves and we've got one more flower to cut and then we're done. Like that. Our die cutting machine can have a bit of a rest. Now we'll get our card together. So this is all the pieces we've got. Which we just die cut. This would look great watercolored too. So the different effects you can get and all our leaves. So what I've got here is a um, blushing bird cardstock, which is 10, if it's just half an A4, it's 10.5 by 29.6. So just basically I've just cut down an A4 uh, vertic vertically, yes. And what you need is your trimmer. So bring in your trimmer. And I'm just going to show you up there. So hopefully you can see that. And I'll bring it further down. So you can see those measurements. So you need to score it, like basically fold it in half. So 14 at 14.8, so that's just your basic measurement, um, which is 14.8. Now take your bl black blade up, um, you can't quite see that, so 14.8 there. We're going to use our grey blade and score that. Okay. Then you're going to score on one side, pick any side, doesn't matter, at 5.3. You don't need to worry about writing this if you don't want to. Um, I will send that out in a newsletter by the weekend. That will probably come Friday or Saturday. Um, and then I'm not going to put that away yet. Um, so then... You're going to get your halfway mark here, which is the half of the 10.5, which is 5.3, right? So I've got a pencil, and you can either measure it here, so bring it up to the 5.3 mark here. You can see your markings there, 5.3. And where that line is, that's where you're going to mark it, 5.3. And you just want to mark there. You don't need to do this next step, but I'll show, um, 
I'll show it to you so that it makes you can see what I'm doing. You can do this straight on your trimmer, but get a ruler just till you and you see that line there, the corner, just pencil and mark like that. And go on to the other side. So now you have got like that diamond shape. So you don't need to do that once you get used to it, but just until, you know. So now align the top and the bottom of that line on your cutting line. And trim that off. And do the same on the other side. So align your top of the line and the bottom of the line. And cut. So that's your fold done. I'm gonna bring this back. If you have any questions, just uh, shout out. And then what we do is burnish these lines. So we're gonna. So that's a mountain. Like this is a. This is a stock standard fold. And I'm just getting rid of the. Let me make that nice half. And. Um, doesn't look like I'll cut it straight, but let's see. And then I've just folded this back. So that's a mountain fold and a regular valley fold. And um, I'm just getting rid of that. So let's make sure that that's dead straight. Bring in our trimmer. Can you see that? It's just a touch out. Not that it's going to matter too much. You can see that that's just slightly out and I'm just going to trim that just a little bit so that it might, um, just a teeny, teeny bit down there. Can't have that showing. <laughs> Making sure that that comes to. Okay, so what we'll do. It's now we're just going to stick this, um, this is 9.9 .9 by 14.2 or 10 by 14.4 if you want to go like straight, like um, a measurement. And I will put, I'll probably put the measurement, I will put these measurements up. So this is the other side of that paper and we're just going to stick that down in the middle there. Just working out what, I might like the pink at the bottom. And so this is the back, like, you will still see this, but um, it's the back of the card, so to speak. And now, so that's that. Now what I have done is I have um, die cut two um, squares from um, the stylish shape size. Have you lost me? Yes, you have. Uh, just bear with me. Sometimes, how much did you miss? It's all I have done. I'm hoping that comes through now. Give me a, oh, yeah, we're there. Okay, I hope you didn't miss much. All I just did, did was stick a piece of uh, uh, DSP there at 10 by... Um, 14.4 which is just a slightly 
bit smaller than that. Um, then I have die cut two squares. Now this is from some new dies we have in the um, animal catalogue and they're called uh, stylish shape size. Um, th these are the shapes you get in it. Um, so they've got some stitching around and they're, I think they're really great um, basic shapes to have in your collection. Uh, if you remember the stitch shapes we had previously which retired, it's similar but it's got more um, your banners as well and um, good range there. So 15 dies in there and I've cut two, two of these. So you're going to have one square sitting there. The positioning, uh, so I'm going to do some stamping but before I do, this die, I'm going to cut some a piece out of our masking paper. Now, um, this is a new product that's coming in the annual catalog. Um, you may have seen it. I'm showing you a brand new sheet. I had a one I had cut, but I just wanted to show you how it comes. If this lets me get it. They're very handy because it helps you do like different techniques. You can mask out areas and blend. You can uh, create different scenes and things like that. It is handy. Um, this is the base. Okay, yeah. So it's got like, it lifts like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do for ease of finding the center, I'm going to cut this um, straight in the middle because I'm going to do some stamping and it'll make sense when I stamp why I'm doing that. Previously you would fussy cut it right um, and this just saves you fuss like um, or you would you would use like a temporary glue and then You can still fussy cut it out of this, but this just saves you using like tacky glue. So I've got a piece cut, uh, a shape cut out of my masking paper. So I'll save that. Now bring back this. So I'm having it like this. So I want to stamp a flower, just a line image, just there in black. I'm not colouring that in, I'm just going to stamp it. This is so tuxedo black and I'm just going somewhere. Now here is where I'm using my masking paper. I will peel the back off and this part is sticky. I'm just going to take that like extra stickiness off so you, you won't have trouble getting it off. And then, um, where is the wrong, did I use the wrong side? I'm thinking at night. See, I think I cut the wrong one. No, 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 no. Yeah, see, I cut the other one. I meant to cut this one. They all look alike. Yeah, I've cut it the other way, which is silly of me. So let's go again. I'm supposed to cut it this way. I'm a ninny, so I'm done. And I had one though, I had cut and I saved it. But you can reuse them, that's the good thing. So I'm just gonna go, just do not, just ignore what I did, what I just did because I did it on the back to 
uh, back to front. I should have done it on the front of it. It still works. It's the wrong side. Uh, and sometimes they think, oh, it's the wrong shape. No, I've done it back to front. Okay. Radio. This should work, we hope. So the colouring took the longest to do this part. Alright, let's work this out. Here we are. I guess I'm going to cover that what I just stamped. So that will stick. And now I want to stamp some of the leaves, right? So I'm bringing this leaf and I might stamp it. I'm just going to work out where I want to stamp it. going to stamp it there. So what the masking paper is doing is essentially covering up your flowers so that it can, um, you can stamp that leaf and it'll look like it's stamped behind that flower. If sometimes you find that it's a little bit too sticky, you can just put the heat gun on it on setting one and it'll come out without any issue at all. Um, but just tapping it like that works on that. So now what I want to do is arrange my flowers around this and I will fix that up. So I only need two and I will go with, um, this is my glue eraser, but sometimes it takes a little bit of ink off as well, which is handy. Okay, so let's bring our dimensionals, our handy dimensionals. I just put two in the center and that allows me to put my, um, leaves under I find just then that helps okay so two will hold it well but it also just gives you that space around the edge to tuck in some leaves before I go ahead I'm going to bring in some my light mel melon mambo because that's my oh I've lost you again I apologize have I no okay now I think I'm there but I'm not sure I'm looking on Facebook Facebook's a bit slow so I'm going to bring it I'm just going to keep going. Um, I'll bring in my Melon Mambo and I'm just going to flick my um, um, it against, this is the brush tip, against my um, cap and do that. And it just gives a lovely um, bit of splattering. Yeah, please um, let me know if you've missed anything and I'm happy to go over what I've just done. Uh, I know the screen went a bit black, but hopefully it caught up it because it didn't look like it had ended. All right, so now for leaves, um, I'm just going to use my bone folder, curve them a bit, and we'll use some little dimensionals, some uh, mini dimensionals to um, uh, 
bring in um, um, to attach those leaves. I love doing the the blending brush, uh, the blending uh, pens, the the splatters like that. It's just um, so much fun. So I'm gonna add one there, and we'll add perhaps one there. Just adding one dimensional there, you can add two, just depends on how you are spaced there. Just tucking that in under there. And one more. So we've got a lovely um, little arrangement there. Now we'll bring in our card. I'm just going to glue that um, like that. You can add more layers if you like, but I think that's just nice as is. Um, still not quite happy with that, but we can fix that after. All right, so clear that. Now, when you're gluing this, just be wary where you are gluing it. So I put the glue just a little bit in because your square is smaller. Um, because if you put glue all over that, um, you can see it on the other side, so you've just got to be a bit aware. And then we'll go. See, I was a bit wonky there. I'll put it that way. And then let's try. Um, this is just my glue eraser. I, I do have some if you uh, in my blue adhesive packs if you are interested um, so, um, if that's come up I'm happy with that now let's bring in our little bits of paper which I had done uh, cut out previously so this one's gonna go there no it's not that one's gonna go there I think yeah hope it's a bit small Let's try it on the inside, we'll do that. That's a bit better. And I might trim that down a touch because I want a bit of a border around it on the side. I just like that this piece of paper matched with my, uh, I mean, it is the other side of the paper, so it doesn't coordinate generally, but um, I just like that. I'm going to match up that Daffodil Delight against that. And just do the same thing on the other side. I will erase that um, little bit of um, markings later. Thinking we may need a bit of a bigger piece. So yeah. let's go. We have another piece cut. We needed nine, nine by ten. You can always use those other pieces. So same thing here on there. All right. 
So that part is pretty easy. And um, once you've created the fancy fold, it's just how you decorate it. And oops, you can um, um, make it your own, really. Now, I've got another um, piece of uh, this same thing, which I've done here. And this goes on the inside, okay? Now, I am going to emboss that. This is a bit of a special card, so I'm doing a little bit extra on this. Um, and I've got the Pretty Flowers embossing folder. You can emboss it whichever way you like because you're going to twist it anyway. Um, so the way you do this, you need your base plate. You don't need plate number two. And you'll sandwich this because this is just a regular embossing folder. It's not one of our pretty and between your plate number two plates number three. So back with that embossing folder. And this gives a really, really, I always like, if it's a special card, I always like to add embossing because um, I just like the look of it. Some of the splatters, I think, and they said, I think it added a bit of uh, prettiness. All right. So one more thing to do, one little um, extra bit to do on our card. And this is uh, for the sentiment. Um, I am bringing in, now there's a, um, I'll tell you why I'm doing this on the Stamparatus. It uh, gives you the ability to Restamp. So I'm going to do some heat embossing in white, but I just find that with my heat embossing, it's better to like have a bit of um, um, not in white. I'm doing it in clear, sorry, uh, but it just uh, gives you a bit of allowance if you miss it to redo it. So the sentiment I am picking because it is a wedding card that I'm doing. Um, is wishing you all the happiness you can imagine. Um, and so with the stamp I just placed it. I'm going to be die cutting this. So I'm just placing it there in the center. I've got my white embossing powder, sorry, clear embossing powder, my Versa mask, and I've got my uh, emboss buddy. Now we don't have this available right now, but it is coming in the new catalog. So uh, in a kit, so you're going to enjoy that. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do colored embossing. So um, ink it up with your Vesa mask. And I do it twice. So that's the advantage of doing it with the Stamparatus. You get to do it twice and then I'm going to bring in melon mambo so the versa marks giving you the stickiness and then you can do in whatever color you like your embossing um your stamping All right so I will go do that again Then this is clear embossing powder. I am going to pour that over. So you've got then, you can emboss in any color you like when you do it that way. Um, by just using the Samark and the clear embossing powder. Been a bit of a fully loaded Facebook Live today, but um, hopefully you can get something that helps you and you can use. Um, so I'm just going to bring in my heat gun and we'll heat it on setting two.
I just keep my gun moving so that it's not, um, sometimes you can see, if you keep it in one spot, you can see a bit of a, a caramelized look. Alright, so this, I picked this up from my, um, this particular die from, who recognizes this? It's an oldie, but a goodie. It's one I've had. It's um, the uh, poppy one. Poppy moments. Oh, one of them. It's one of the, <laughs> the one with the sentiment. Uh, but you will get the proper name in your in your instruction. Painted label, sorry, it's painted labels, that's what it's called. That's the proper name for it. It's a good um yeah. It's got quite a few um dies for sentiments and things like that. What I do want, so I, I might just use. I'm looking for my washi. It's not like I don't have any, but all right, let's get this. I'm just going to take a bit of this um, masking paper. Let's see. We can use this. Might be tricky to get it out because it's not on a corner. Not in the center. Silence. Oh, here we are. Take a big tool's good for that. Okay. So just so same thing as washing. And if I've missed anyone's comments, I'm sorry. I'm just I've, I have looked through, but sometimes it's a little bit slow and it's not loading so I'm uh, missing some comments. I can see those comments there so I'll go, go quickly go and check. So we've got a nice little sentiment. So it's white on white, but um, that just pops. Um, and now the easiest way is to, you need to stick this directly under that, right? So what I find, put your glue on the back. So I want that, um, the splat is more sort of to the right, so that's what's going to stick on. So you're putting your glue on the back, and then it's harder to try and align it this way. So, so put it like that, just sit it on top of that, see so you've aligned it, and then bring your piece of stuff that way and then you've got it aligned that's probably the that's what I've found has been the easiest for me to work out and now we've got our little flower to put in there and we'll put this in there isn't that pretty just with that little bit of embossing it just adds a little, just so much to that um, um, card. So I'm going to add four because it's a bit overkill, but it's on the inside and I want that sentiment to just stay put. So 
thanks Renate for the comments uh, and uh, thanks Alana. Yeah, sorry, I've, it's been a dodge. <laughs> uh, technology and the internet uh, can can sometimes stress us out. Okay, just put that there and then we'll put that flower there. I think it's a cute card and it's um, reasonably easy fold, I think. I like those fun folds that look amazing, but then it hasn't, um, this took a little while because I was coloring and all that sort of jazz, but you could die cut those um, flowers off the DSP and then it's much, much quicker. And we'll put a leaf there. And yes, I've got ribbon. One of my friends says Rochelle will always put ribbon. Yes. Must have ribbon. So we've got the inside done. Now, I've got silver and gold, so let's see what. Oh, get rid of the card. That wasn't meant to happen. Oh, I think the gold. I was tossing up what to put. I, me is thinking gold. So this is, um, what's it called? It's a shimmer ribbon. It's um, one centimeter width. And it's very nice. It's one of those nice golds, like it's not like in your face gold. Go there, and we have got some of this uh, glossy dots. Um, this is the um, part of the suede, and I thought we can use it. So you could pick any color you wanted, but I think um, I could even go with those blues would be nice. But um, let's go with this, and then I will show you the other card I made with this. And if you haven't got a take your pick tool, get yourself a take your pick tool. It'll um, make your life easier. Um, and I then you can decorate the envelope how you like. I will probably put another one of these flowers and color it up. Um, just to go a bit extra for this, but um, or you can put some paper. So that's the card um, done. So I had some embossing, I did some splatters again with the um, Melon Mambo uh, stamping blend and we did that Versamark and uh, with the clear embossing and the Melon Mambo ink. So something um, you can use um, with any colour embossing. So I hope you have liked that uh, and enjoyed that card. Now this is the other card I did, so it's exactly the same design as the Irish but that particular one, I just used the other three colours on it. Um, and um, this, of course, is another paper. I used Fresh Frisia and Pool Party to colour these flowers. Um, and of course I used those Pool Party um, little dots there. Um, same colours on the leaves. 
and I stamped in fresh freesia on this. Um, uh, and other than that, it's pretty similar, but I just I just even like using the two different colors there with um, with that um, flower, just using that is just contrast colors, and it just really works um, to get your uh, mix mix of colors. So um, I hope you um, try that, and um, a few things you can give it a go, and. Um, Please sign up for um, the newsletter. I will send you out um, uh, the tutorial at, by the end of this week. So you, uh, for my newsletter subscribers, so you can um, try this at home and um, let me know how it go. You can even put it in the comments of this video if you do try it. I'd love to see what you do. And thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of the week. I am so looking forward to the end of this week because I get two weeks uh, school holidays so um, I'm really looking forward to that and um, and if I can help you with your ordering please contact me and um, I'll be happy to help you with um, anything you need all right thanks so much guys have a great rest of the week bye bye